What is up, Evil Dead fans? This is a video that's been requested by a bunch of people or people have messaged me about asking how do you fix a miscut home light XL when making your Ash vs. Evil Dead chainsaw, Evil Dead 2 chainsaw, Army of Darkness. There is a way to fix it. Please do not throw away your home light XL. Do not throw it away. If you, if you want to get rid of it, send it to me. I'll take it. Uh, this is a good way to fix the mis mix or a mist cut. Let's say you're cutting that nice fine edge that's on the right side. If you're looking from the back, the right side, you miscut cut that. Or if you buy a top from somebody and you already cut your body and it's not the exact same width, there is a way to fix that. But I do suggest every time you're building a chainsaw, have your top done. Um, just because adding, you know, if you do the technique I do, adding uh, bond over the edges, get a nice fine look, and then adding paint, it does widen it out just a little bit. You don't want to mess that up. It will change everything up. You want to make sure if you're buying one, you want to have that on hand. Um, or if you're building one, you want to have that already pre-built. Um, basically, you know, your chainsaw, you know, I, I kind of pre-recorded stuff earlier. Um, I got a little screwed up. Basically, your cut has your chainsaw has to be built around your top. Basically, uh, <clears throat> you can't have your thing pre-cut and then say I'm going to build my top around it, and then your top comes out looking like that instead of like that. You know, wide in the back like a big old butt. You don't want that. Uh, you want it nice and straight. So there is a way to fix a miscut. Let's say you got your top later after you cut it, or if you miscut it. Uh, when you have your top, because it's easily miss, easily miss, you know, you can easily miscut it. I will show you an example of one that I miscut and I fixed, <clears throat> um, that I had one sitting around for a long time that needed to be fixed. And uh, let's say you add too much heat when you do your cut, it warps it out. I'm going to talk about that too. So really, <clears throat> this is uh, just all around kind of. If you need to fix something that's miscut on your home light XL. This is the video for you. So let's get into it. Okay, so right here we have a normal Home Light XL body, and this is in really nice shape. It's one of my last bodies I have. And also to talk about the three for free again, um, I gotta wait till we start molding bodies because it's not hasn't become affordable to be given ones away right now. Home lights are getting very scarce and very expensive. So spending a hundred dollars on a home light. And giving it away it really isn't very cost effective with all the time and everything put into it but it will still happen once the body start getting molded this is one of my last ones this is for a friend of mine this one's going to be for my friend kurt eubank but let's uh get into it okay when cutting the top this is by far one of the hardest cuts to do because it can easily be screwed up now a lot of times when you measure everything up up and down what i like to do just put a piece of masking tape all the way across to make sure my line is straight and your cut is correct. Now the biggest part where people screw it up is down here. This is the worst spot right here. A lot of people cut too much out or they cut it at an angle and just simply screw it up that way. Uh, not so much over this way. And I do suggest if you're making a, a Ash vs Evil Dead or whatever Evil Dead chainsaw make sure if you're buying a top from somebody that you get your top first before you do your cut because you can cut way too much off or you know if you cut too little off you can easily grind that down but you can easily screw up your cut because the top that you bought isn't correct with your, with your cut now <clears throat> another thing that could happen with these plastic ones is your measurements right and your cut is right but you still have a big gap down here the reason for that is, is when you cut it, you put too much heat on it. Now, it depends on what tool you're using. If you're using a Dremel, it's not so bad. It's just very painstaking with a Dremel uh, to, to cut. Trust me, I've done it. Um, when using like a die grain or things like that, you can add too much heat to the body and will actually warp this edge out. And I will show you guys in a second how to fix that because if it's warped out and all your measurements and your cut is straight, it's warped out, you're gonna to need to pull this edge back in. So let's take a look at a body that had a miscut. Okay, so here's a body that I've had for a long time. It had a miscut, I miscut it a long time ago and it's just been sitting around and just waiting for the right time, the right project for it. And uh, I've fixed chainsaw cuts before, things like that. And uh, if you take a close look, 
you can see where the original cut was and you can see the miss miscut right here. Now, how to fix it instead of throwing the whole mite away. Please do not throw them away. If you have a miscut and you don't want to fucking fix it, send it to me. I'll keep it. Trust me. Okay. Also, <clears throat> getting back into it, what you want to do first is you want to put a nice bottom structure here. Now, what I put on the bottom, you really can't tell. Okay, you see that piece of metal right there? That is used, that is glued in with ultra um, Loctite super glue. Just, I just needed it right here. I just needed a thin pass through out here. So I put that panel all the way through here. And you gotta remember your top needs to be done or at least put together um, with, you know, if you're doing it the way I do it, it needs to be bonded and painted so the thickness is correct. Or I have the one that you bought from somebody on hand. So what I did is I took my top and I sat it down and pushed it over this way to check my gap size or my gap size over here. Because you want your other edge to be flush over here. You don't want to add stuff over here because it looks wonky. You want to add it all right here. So I'd hold it over this way, measure my gap all the way to here. And you can see this little black line. That's where I knew I needed to stop. So what I use, Milliput. Milliput fixes about everything. Uh, I wouldn't suggest using Bondo. I've seen people use Bondo, which is okay. It's not as hard or structurally sound as Milliput. Bondo will work, but it's not as, not as stiff, basically. Um, <clears throat> now, when you're doing your little metal under piece here, you can bring it all the way out so it's held in a little better with the bolts here. You don't have to do that, or the screws, you don't have to do that. Just remember, you need a lot of clearance down here if you're doing the block piece. You'll have to readjust your block size or the panel that's underneath your block, like what I do, to make sure it's at the right height and it can still fit. You may have to adjust it down there. And that's really the best place to do it. You don't want to really change your block piece that you're going to be doing. Just the little panel that's with it. <clears throat> and yeah, you can't have a lot hanging down here or anywhere because things need to sit right. So you put your panel, your little metal panel on, you glue it, you clamp it with the glue, or if you want to bolt it down here, it's fine. I do suggest if you do the bolt technique here, you still want to add some glue so you can take those bolts out back and forth. Um, so you can adjust things, move things, and do um, mock-ups and your final installation. So what you want to do is you want to get your milliput. I've talked about a milliput a million times. I have seen somebody uh, do edges with... Uh, uh, what is that 3d pen i think jason smith did that i'm pretty sure he did that was a genius thing that i've seen somebody do um i think he had a super two and he had to add stuff out here and he did that and it looked very very nice he did a great job with that so what you want to do when you add your milliput don't be too much in, of an, in a hurry uh because milliput takes a you know a good four to six hours to sit if not longer depending on the area that you're doing it temperature things like that like when I did this one, it only took about four to six hours to dry because I put it in front of my garage heater. Every time it kicked on, it would help speed up the drying process. So adding the middle plate, you know, you ball it up together and you add it. You slowly add it. You, want, you can overlap over the top. Just don't get it too thick. And you don't want it thick on the bottom. <clears throat> one thing I do suggest to have a water or glass of water nearby to wet it down, to smooth it out on the edges, things like that. You want to add a little extra on this edge here and on the top, not on the bottom. Like I said, you're going to have to fit things. Now, when it's dry and you're ready to sand it, now you don't want to go with a, just a really, really coarse sandpaper. You want to definitely have a straight kind of sanding piece. I do suggest using sanding blocks. You can buy them at any hardware store. You can buy them in a three pack where it's from fine to coarse. I do suggest to buy those. They're not expensive either. So what you want to do first when you sand it, like I said, not something too coarse and definitely don't go too rough with it because you can easily screw it up. You gotta remember it's not as good as the original plastic, but it's damn close. And if uh, you're going too fast, you can put divots in there. Like you hit a little spot and you can add divots and then you gotta add some more mellow plate and you don't wanna do that. You wanna get it right the first time. Now what you do is you wanna get this nice fine edge every time you want to do that first that'd be the first sanding that you do 
And the more you sand, the more you're gonna have to put your top back on to make sure your gaps are starting to line up and fit and start to disappear. Because let's say you have a big gap up here, that means you have way too much down here. Let's say you have a gap down here, not here, but here, it means you have a high spot. That's why it's nice to have those sanding blocks. Now, once you have this edge, you do your top piece, your top edge, and you wanna get it nice and flush. And adding the water with smoothing things out with Milliput, it actually helps it stick a little better versus just like sticking it on like that, you know, just kind of globbing it on. Uh, the water does help. It's kind of like an adhesive a little bit. Um, but after that, yeah, you wanna get your nice fine line up here because this is nice and flush, but you can see that ugly cut. You wanna see your ugly cut. You do, you wanna see it so you know you have the right, uh, you know, the right amount sanded off the top. You want it nice and flush. Now, if you have a little spot break out here and there, which is possible, depends on how rough you are or how heavy handed you are, you're gonna have to stop and add some mill put. <laughs> or get it entirely sanded, find all the divots that you have. If you have divots because you went too fast or too rough, add it, add your mill put in with the water, mill put and water, smooth it out, and then just do a light sanding. But after it's done, your top should fit flush. You shouldn't have any gaps. Let me grab something here. Let me get a sanding block and show you what you want. Okay, so see how it's nice and flat all the way across? That's what you want. Basically, mainly you want your top to fit. Because I don't know, I mean, I've seen people make them to where they kind of angle in the back, kind of widen out in the back and angle towards the front. I've seen all kinds of stuff. Um, like I said, if you're, if you're going to cut your chainsaw, you definitely want to have your top first. You don't want to build a chainsaw around the top. You want your top. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. Basically, you want to have everything there. You don't want to screw it up. Trust me. I remember when I miscut this a long time ago, I was so pissed and I didn't know what I was going to do, but then I figured out how to fix things um, and do things like that. Uh, also, let's say you just have a little spot, just a little tiny spot, and you have one of those really pristine uh, chainsaws or Home Life XL chainsaws, you don't want to repaint it. Is there a way to fix that? Yes, there is. Uh, my friend Chris Pollock, when he did, he had a little spot on one chainsaw he had to fix. So we got Milliput and Apple Barrel, which I don't like Apple Barrel, uh, acrylic paint. He mixed a certain, I don't know what he used, uh, kind of Apple Barrel paint together, mixed it in with the Milliput, and it came out flawless. Like he mixed it all the way through. It wasn't just painted over. It was basically a red, you know, piece of Milliput that he stuck in there. And even him sanding it, he, it looks like it's natural. So he did a great job with that. So that's an easy way to fix that. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. And uh, till next time, you guys stay groovy. I almost forgot when are pulling in a body. Say your cut's right and you need to pull it in. Now, if you do a, a bracket like this for your chainsaw bar, this is where I install my chainsaw bar. My baggie's on the inside. When you put it, when you make one, when it comes to this edge here, you want to make sure that it's just a little, this edge of the metal is a little bit in. So when you install it and you tighten it down, it actually pulls this edge in a bit and will line it up. That's a good way to fix that in case you have any kind of warpage. Now, remember at the same time, if you're doing that kind of technique, you need to make sure that your backing and everything lines up straight because if you bend it in too much, then your chainsaw bar is gonna go whomp out all kinds of cattywampus. You don't want that. So that's how you fix that warpage. It's just pulling it back, pulling that body just back in. You can add heat to the body in certain spots to pull it in, but you can actually ruin it uh, or yeah pretty much ruin it and screw it up worse than it was but that's an easy way to pull this top edge back in if you need that all right so i'm going to say it again and i'll say it to you later at some other point you guys stay groovy